G'day guys, welcome back to another Fair Income episode. Name's Sahail. Ali. Um, today's episode is about Squid Game, a bit on conspiracy theories, and then also Ashraf gives us a lesson on why breathing is important. Now he's spraying his deodorant and just ruining the intro. But yeah, enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. That metaphor is conspiracy theorists, if they hit the nail on the head, and they've been talking about a certain topic for ages. If they get killed, what's the suspicion? What they've been saying has been right the whole time. Because mm, they'll always tell you, if I'm right, watch. So they're going to kill me in the next couple of years. The mm. government's after me, you know? So like, if you, if you, if you, we need people like that. Because it kind of like, it'll give you that warning. Mm. That's the warning for the rest of us that this guy's not just spitting crazy stuff. He's actually speaking the truth. But mm. also, if you have a conspiracy theory and you're one of like the people that started that and then it ends up being true, you're the man. Fair with power. But it's one of those things where it's like, we're not experts. You're probably qu paraphrasing from an expert. But they're just, the more you know and the more you res um, do research, is like the more you realise you actually don't know how much is going on. It's like, all I'm getting, even when I do hours of research, I'm only getting 5%. Mm -hmm. Like, what about that city? All I'm fi finding out is about the capital. You know, what's happening here? It's like, subhanAllah. Yeah. You know? But the whole world, that's what going, um, I'm going to take that to Squid Game. Go you for know? it. Because yeah. when the first statement you said is, you know, we don't know what's going on in the rest of the world. And I'm thinking, what happens if Squid Game is actually like real? Or Bro. those type of stuff happen in random villages? Because what we found out with like, uh, what's happening with the Uyghur Muslims in China, the stuff that's even in 2020, you have no idea what's happening around the world. Undercover, like bro. It's undercover. There's Area 51, South Korea, North Korea. You don't, you don't know what's happening in random villages. And now you watch Squid Game and you're like, is this, did it actually happen? Like, where did they get the idea from? Yep. Maybe it happened tw 20 years ago, you know? Oh, sorry. And one more suggestion. There was recently a, um, a documentary made about what happened with, you know, the Saudi journalist, Khashoggi? Khashoggi? Bro. Amazing. Good docker. What's Amazing. the docker Amazing. Um, what's it called? Uh, do you know by any chance what the docker is called? I'll, I'll find it and I'll, and I'll let you know. I threw my phone over there from before because <laughs> of cringy yeah. TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. I'm not. Uh, no spoilers for anyone that hasn't watched. I'll spoil it for you. I know the it's whole good thing. game. We're <laughs> only halfway through. You know, we actually <laughs> watched episode four. There's gonna be spoilers. Just so you guys know, I watched episode four right before you came. Oh, that, well, that like, kills yeah. us because they're doing tug of war. And <laughs> Do you know what happened? No. Oh, you don't see the ending. We have no idea. Because no, at the time, the ending of the episode was... They're about to get Like, do you know off. the main guy? I don't know his name. Some Korean name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> <he's dead>. <laughs> 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 say <laughs> Ji Hon? Or something like that. But yeah, so he was... They were playing against an all-men side. And it's like, mm. what chance do they have? And then the old guy gave some, like, mad tactics when he was younger. Yeah. That fool cheered me up, bro. I know. Because he was saying the tactics of what he used to do while they're walking out as a team like damn they're gonna actually mm. win oh you're gonna get so guessed. No but idea. before any of that we watched the trailer like four days ago when it first came out the first day i watched the trailer because i saw it and i'm like okay maybe this is actually good let's start a new show i watched the trailer i'm like uh that doesn't look that good mm. i don't know if anyone else has watched the trailer and is feeling the same way but we do recommend sussing it out because it is worth there's only 10 episodes yeah. It's not, and it's something different. Well, like it's I've an hour each episode, so it's a bit of a. Well, a lot happens each episode. Yeah, I watch like one or two a day. Yeah, I don't well, know how people can smash it all in one night. I smash it all. <laughs> no <laughs> way. I don't well, know how you can. I do think that. it was two nights. I'm not too sure. I think it might, bro. I'm feeling like every day hours? feels like the same, bro. Yeah, it wouldn't have been. Down. It could have been one day. But then the things, the suspense doesn't <laughs> build up. I know it's mad because oh, the story. Bro, you know, no, 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 don't, don't. You can't do back to back, bro. You gotta enjoy it. Some things deserve to be all in one day. Yeah. Some things deserve. I'm 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 an advocate against it because I watch things very slowly. Mm. But bro, my whole family watched three seasons of Cobra Kai in a day, bro. Don't. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's worth it. That's worth it. If you're not yeah. on the train, if you're not on the, if you're not on the train, basically with them, yeah. they're going with, they're going without you. Yeah. yeah. So for me, it's like FOMO. I'm like, no way, I'm missing out on this because then so I'm gonna end up walking in on episode exactly, seven and yeah. I'm gonna be like missing something, you know? Yeah. Or well, someone's gonna behind. say something in your family when you're like yeah. exactly. Your whole family watched Cobra Kai. Well, they've watched, bro. Yeah. They used to bag me about it. <laughs> no Are you way. watching teen movies? This, <laughs> this, that. And I was like, I looked at them like this. I go, if you watch one episode, trust me. Because yeah. at, at the start, it, it did seem like that. It took a while to get into it. And then all of a sudden, you're just addicted. Our, you're our family friends watched it. 
And they're just, we went over to like Ramadan to the house. They were chatting for an hour about Cobra Kai. I'm like, bro, ax that. <laughs> and then I watched one episode, hooked. I watched season one. I told my family, watch season one. I watched season two. I watched season two with them, three. I watched season three with Ali. I had to watch it twice. I told you to watch it too, but. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah I watched that at the end. But on Took Squid Game, what's, um, because a lot's been happening. Like I don't want to ruin it, but I, I want to. Yeah. You want to know what, uh, for the who series. do you think wins? That's that's what I want to. You guys try to predict who wins. Well, you're saying like the tug of war? Like the whole thing. Oh, the whole thing. The whole game. But it depends. Is it yeah. one person? Is it a group? I have no idea. Cause it's I'm one yeah. person. They say it. But it's oh, it's only one person who win. Yeah. No, isn't it? Like um. I thought whoever's alive. Yeah, like I thought for example, like there's six winners. Yeah, let's just say the main guy's team, and they they share the money. Oh, the tug of war. No, no, no I'm no. saying in general. There's like no teams, bro. The start. No, but so, so I don't mean the word, the term team. I mean like whoever's left, they can play all the six games. There's six left, uh, like for example, and they share all that money in the piggy bank. Isn't that it? Is there only one winner? Only, uh, well, there is only one. Oh, I just ruined well. that for years, but anyways, yeah, so. <laughs> no, I, thought, no. I don't want to talk about it anymore. <laughs> wait, wait, so is there going to be like more seasons as well? Because it seems like a show that there will I can't, be. There I can't will picture yeah. the second be. season. Based off the ending, there will be another okay. season. Okay. I didn't. I thought it was just shared. Maybe in episode five, they'll explain there has to be one winner. Yeah. Do you get it? Well, early on, they didn't really because now there's like ninety people left. Um, who's gonna win it? I can't not see the main guy winning it. Just nah, like, but I can't it's see not him like that. Nah, it's not like that. Though. Shows done. Yeah, shows like, Jaina. Like <laughs> knowing this show, like how many di- different things happen? It's like four yeah. main characters, but yeah. five main characters. Yeah, yeah I can. Yeah. Um, to, like, I introduce can. The guy the from main. SNU with the glasses is gonna win. The doctor. Yeah. Oh no, that guy. Yeah. With his mum and just. Cause, yeah, I don't know. Just oh, I don't know if you have seen this. Honestly. I could have. Okay, maybe. He's, he's, the honestly, doctor. I don't so want to spoil the doctor. Like you think the no, doctor, no, no, yeah? No, yeah, the doctor. No, SNU, the guy at SNU. You went to business school. Not that. No, the you're, you're talking about the business it. guy that's in debt? Yeah. Because you can see that Six now, yeah. yeah? You think the business guy that's in debt? Who yeah. do you think? I'm just oh. not going with the main guy, so I don't know. I can't tell you yes or no. Go with Ali. I'm not going to say anything. No, yeah, I don't, I'm not convinced <laughs> by that guy. Ali, yeah, he's too nice for it. He's too nice for it. He's like, thank you, sir. It's like, bro, relax, man. Um, I don't think the main guy, man, he's too like emotional. See how emotional he is. Mm. The girl could, that girl with you know the pocket knife. Yeah, she's pretty good. Big but I don't know, knife. man. Like, I'm even just surprised that you told me there's only one winner. I don't want to. Like, I can't talk to Sue. He's gonna say something. <laughs> but yeah, I but don't know, uh, man. I don't know. The I'm way the way the way the series progresses, you can understand why I'm saying that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want now forty people die in a tug of war. Like half of them, half of them die. Yeah, yeah. So it's understandable. Like they're cutting people. Oh, he's you you want to drop a name? The good we, yeah, I think. How the about girl. the snake okay. guy? How about the guy with the, s- the snake yeah, thing? Nah, he's the snake. lowest. I don't. Yeah, he's Which the lowest. Well, I no, nah, he's. I reckon yeah. he's gonna go, man. That because yeah. you know how like he he was with that girl and then he betrayed her in tug of war. Then that case, I feel then. like she's gonna <laughs> kill him like yeah. somehow at night or something when he's sleeping, something like that. Because <laughs> if, if he wins, that's a giant. Yeah, but <laughs> it's interesting, bro. It's, it's good because it's a new kind of show. You know, I've never really watched something like that. There was one game, I think it was called The Circle or a movie. Yeah, it's like Mafia, that. but it was a, it was a real Circle. There's actually a TV show called The Circle. It's like kind of like Love Island. Oh no, I'm no. pretty sure it's called The Circle. It's on Netflix. It's pretty much Mafia in real life, but you pretty much choose who dies next. And it was an hour and a half in one room, just them chatting, saying, "I think this guy's the Mafia." Pretty much, kill him, and they kill him. And it was like that was like the only kind of show where you play that much. and think about like when they're voting people out. Sorry, when they're voting people out, they're thinking of reasons to kill them. So it's like, oh, this guy's old, yeah. he's useless anyway, he's gonna die. Or oh, this guy's rich, he's arrogant, we don't yeah. need him here. So it's very interesting, bro. That, that's what Squid Game is good. Like that, yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> How was it when you finished it? Good? Like up there, you really enjoyed it, or is it not really worth the hype compared to what it's getting? No, no, it's very, very good. I I would rate it about an eight out of ten. Eight and a half. Damn. Damn. Like a lot of people say ten. <gasps> oh my yeah, god! A lot of people over exaggerate. Yeah? yeah, but for me, I'm telling you because I finished it all and I've watched it. I think you know when you watch horror movies and you see that main character always run back in to the building where she's got nothing there. Like there's no reason to go back in, but for some reason they always decide to run back into the house where the that hero. guy is that's trying to kill her. Yeah, this is the exact same thing. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna tell you. That's, that's <laughs> why I'm gonna leave it there. I scratched my head and I go, "What the flip are you doing with yourself?" Hero God? mode. You're stupid. Anyways, yeah. Okay. But yeah, that's that's basically. But you you see that's not giving away too much. Yeah. You see as well like the extreme measures people go in, like obviously it's a lot of money. Yeah. Like it's life changing 100 percent for your next three generations. But it's like 
to go kill people and like do these games where it's like you like they they're trying to cut out the star and the circle. And stuff. <laughs> you just seen like, that part. <laughs> and they start licking you. It's like, <laughs> like what the hell? You have to, bro. It's life and death. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, it's life and death. But that's the interesting thing is it's like do we share the money, which is a completely different perspective to only one person gets it. Then you got to kill your best friend. You got to kill whatever. You got to sacrifice yourself. Whatever it is that's a different story, man. Uh, do you want to love? Do you know that big, the big girl, the 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 doll thing, the one that goes yeah, yeah, da, da, yeah and green light, turns around, red light, yeah, and then it kind of like has the motion yeah. sensors in its eyes. But there's a funniest thing. My brother showed me this. Um, there's a toilet. There's a bathroom in I think Japan, and there's like this massive head <laughs> that stares at you, bro. There's a massive head that basically comes closer and closer to you the longer you stay in the bathroom. Bro, oh my life, yeah. If you see this what thing, you'll hell? piss yourself. It's watching you pretty much. <laughs> yeah, bro. We, we, we can probably put it on the episode. And, and it does a <laughs> That is weird. That's creepy. Bro, and yeah. it, this, this face is actually scary. Mm. It's not like a pleasant, like a smile or something. Yeah. It's like, it's a weird face. And it keeps coming closer and closer <laughs> to you. What happens when it comes, like, if you just take super long... How bro, get out, bro. Don't <laughs> take a number... Bro, do not take a shite there because <laughs> it's not going to be a pleasant thing, right? It's not going to be a pleasant ending. That's but, yeah. Is there reasons to why they have it there? Like... Bro, you can't... It's just, like... Sorry, it's like Japanese culture. culture. You I have no Japan. idea. I, lo- yeah. I love Japan. I'm not going to say anything bad about them. But it is weird. <laughs> yeah, very weird. They have yeah. a lot of weird stuff. Like, I was going to say, you know the way you think Squid Game is weird? Japanese game shows are weird. <laughs> you have to watch. When I was growing up, MXC, do you remember that? You, do you remember? There was like these two Asian guys, so two Japanese guys always take the piss out of the contestants. Yeah? And then, and then like at the end, I was saying, no life insurance. No. <laughs> it's good, bro. Um, but like then there's this. What's it called? Mount Midoriyama, yeah? Yes, Mount Midoriyama, bro. That, there's like a massive boulder that keeps rolling down. You got to try and make it to the top of the mountain. Oh, yeah, that's Start sick, getting yeah. clocked and then some guy sprains. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> it's right. hilarious. It's that's good, sick, it's good. Yeah, the Japanese game shows, bro, they make me look at Squid Game and go, you know what, this is probably light work for them, bro. They're forward, <laughs> they're forward thinking, man. You know, they're forward thinking. Us here, we're doing... Oh, no, we got is, <laughs> nah, but we got the chase. When you just ask people cute, like questions about history. Yeah, that's we're, that's we're civilized. Don't forget that. We are civilized. Bro, Japanese people are more civilized than Western us. Western society <laughs> is civilized. Bro, in Japan, you know about the suicide rates, yeah? If low? like kind of like they got a high, like, um, what's that thing called? Like honor. Like, like they really mm. regard honor as a thing there. So like when it comes to like, when it comes to things that they prioritize in life, number one for them is basically like how they're perceived by others or like, like, Number one. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Wow. Bro, because you hear these stories about like people committing suicide. Suicide forest. What's his name? Mm. Logan Paul and whatever. Yeah. And you hear that the suicide rates are probably some of the highest in that country and and China as well. I think in the in the um the sweatshops. Yeah, the sweatshops the they put stories, nets outside the windows so yeah. if people try to commit suicide they just get caught by the net. So they well. can't do it. But in Japan, yeah, basically they have like like if they're like late to work by one minute I heard, I heard like some pers- some people kill themselves if they don't get their work done on time. I they're staying in overnight. Oh, so you're saying like, maybe you, like degrade. Yeah, they stay, they sleep in yeah. the office if they don't finish their work. Not, but they're not going to kill oh. themselves for one minute of work. Look it up. Well, I look it up. I'm telling you. But like losing like a bit of their reputation. I have that. to get my phone started. Yeah, no, no. It's well, that's interesting because <laughs> he's trying to talk and <laughs> your mic's two meters away. Because you see as well the World <laughs> Cup and some other events here, yeah, the Olympics. Yeah, they, clean up the, you, they clean up the place, they thank them they because they really want people to think good of them. It's interesting. Yeah, I, know, I know it's a big thing in Japanese culture, but I didn't know like suicides for, at least in my eyes, something so small as, mm. he can, you know, it's not being b- punctual. For it's example. called Bushido in, in Japanese. Sorry, keep talking. What does Bushido bro? mean? Honor. Okay. The very the yeah. Japanese are very ambitious of honors and distinctions and think themselves superior to all nations in military glory yeah, and valor. Yeah. I think <laughs> this all happened <laughs> after it was Hiroshima and Nagasaki, yeah? yeah? They made like a pledge mm. that they'll never be they'll never be put that far behind again. I know for example the creator of Sony, he's Japanese. Okay. Yeah. And he Sony came out and it expanded from one thing like PlayStation to TVs to computers to every single thing and he said the goal of Sony wasn't just to be like Apple, which is a successful company. He wanted to change Japan through a company. So he wanted to make... So see, what do you think about when you see something say made in China? You think cheap, yeah? Usually, yeah. Yeah, cheap. And they made a thousand in a sweatshop. 
But when he, what Japan used to be thought of as exactly the same. And he goes, I want to change the way Japan is perceived into high quality products. Now when someone says technology made in Japan, what do you think? They're 20 years ahead of us. Yeah, yeah advanced. But in 1960, 1970, when all these things happened, they were third world country. Mm. And now they're working their way up. But it's not just through like China, which is like quantity. Japan wanted to do it through quality. And just that guy that created Sony was uh, one of like the forward thinkers of Japan. Because 50 years ago, they mm. were, you know, yeah. Like that, subhanAllah. So this this is uh, some statistics I got you from Statista. So it's Batista's <laughs> cousin. Um, in 2020, approximately 21.1 thousand people committed suicide in Japan. They died. They had more people die from suicide than COVID. That's what they said somewhere here. What? What's the rate? Like, in Japan, is that like a 1% of the population? In Japan, this is on CNN. In Japan, more people died from suicide last month than COVID in all of 2020. <laughs> and women have been impacted the most. So, bro, it's like there's there is there's there's like a massive shame culture there apparently as well. Mm. It's kind of oh, like okay. because they hold themselves to such high regard and high esteem and all that sort of stuff. Basically, like you can tell by the progression of the society mm. when it comes to technological stuff and. I shame with the Amish in general. Yeah, bro. Well, like, <laughs> we hectic convert. Can you imagine that though? <laughs> can you imagine that? Like yeah. an Amish Japanese mix? <laughs> That'd be crazy. Have, have you heard of Ikigai? <laughs> Is he disgusting? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, a, it's a book about Japanese because there's a village in Japan which... Ooh. Carry on. Because yeah, there's, there's something called, the, I think, the Blue Zones. It's like five areas in the world where the average life expectancy is like over 100. Okay? And there's two areas in Japan where the average life expectancy is like 112. Yep. And there's people 125, 20s. When they're 95, they're driving, working. And it's like, what the hell? So this book pretty much studied their lives, asked them questions, asked them, you know, about how they perceive life. And then I think they had that kind of aspect. It was like an honor to live long. And that's what they were most prideful. Like when you entered the city, it's like the city of the people that live longer than the rest mm. of the world. Mm. And that's something they, you know, have pride. And they're for. known by, yeah. Which is interesting. You, you were telling me about it. You were talking about Icky, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Makes sense now, yeah. yeah. But, um, nah, bro. Like um, I'll, I'll I'll change gears again, and this is this is only because of things that I've like basically you're asking me what have you learned or what have you seen mm. or or heard about in the past couple of weeks, and there's this one concept of like do you know why conspiracy theorists are important? Like people that make could up you, the could you could you answer that if someone was asking you why do you think conspiracy theorists are important to society? I think it's always good for people to have. Like n not the mistrust, but the idea where it's like sometimes you want to have a different opinion on things. Sometimes people need that kind of thing. It's like fake news that spreads so quick. People like to jump onto this idea where it's like well, you don't know the full story. They're a bit skeptical, mm -hmm. and people kind of like that idea. You know, they like to chat about it, discuss it. It's like we don't know the full story because it's a bit boring if you know everything. Yeah, hundred percent. So I think a lot of people like that. Mm. I'm not too and sure. And I think you, you kind of like with historical context, like a lot of people have created mistrust. They're not just going to take things firsthand from what you tell me. Mm. I'm going to have to find out the full scope, the context, and what's actually going on, you know? Mm. And I'm just not going to take your word for it anymore because I know that you've lied to me on many occasions. Yeah. So what do you what do you think, Ali? No, you're right. That's partly the reason, but... I think with conspiracy theories, it's just like maybe just to try to develop optimism. Mm -hmm. Like keeping up in mind, thinking like most things are not only run one way. Yep. So I think that's just one thing. Just you know, obviously that there's a lot of uh, conspiracy theories that are true and not true. But at least you can go into things with an open mind, looking at both sides before making a judgment. Definitely. So there's a concept called the canary in the cage. You've heard of it before? The canary. Canary in the cage. No. So basically, back in the day when they used to do mining, you know, when you're mining, you don't really know what you're gonna hit when you get lower and yeah. lower and lower. Yeah. So. They were afraid that because a lot of people were dying from gas leaks in mines, and you can see it's like a very like it's like a very condensed space. Mm. So it's gonna have a greater effect on the people that are in there if they hit a gas leak and they can't really smell it. So in your house now, you know the reason you can smell that the gas is on is because they mix carbon dioxide with the gas. So that makes it easy for you to detect whether or not the stove's gas is still mm. on, on or it's not on. Okay. But back in the day, they didn't have that. They didn't have the luxury. They don't have the luxury of 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 mixing carbon dioxide into the gas that comes out from mines, basically from from the mining fields. So basically, 
what they do is they they have a concept called canary in a cage, which means that they used to put basically canaries in cages inside the mines where people were digging. So then, when people go down there, if the canary is still living, there's no gas leak. There's no problem. This mm-hmm. isn't a health concern. But whenever a gas leak hits, the canary will die. And well, that down. means this isn't safe for work. We're not allowed to be here. Everybody evacuate. Nobody come here. It's not safe. Mm. The reason why they use the word canary, like they use that 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 um that metaphor is conspiracy theorists, if they hit the nail on the head and they've been talking about a certain topic for ages, if they get killed, what's the suspicion? What they've been saying has been right the whole time. Because mm. they'll always tell you, if I'm right, watch. So they're going to kill me in the next couple of years. The mm. government's after me, you know? So like, if you th- if you, if you you we need people like that because it kind of like, it'll give you that warning. Mm. That's the warning for the rest of us that this guy's not just spitting crazy stuff. Mm. He's actually speaking the truth. But mm. also, if you have a conspiracy theory and you're one of like the people that started that and then it ends up being true... You're the man mm-hmm. Forever Like no one can ever say You were wrong It's like You didn't trust me And look what happened For example If mm. they said the earth's yeah. flat I was the first guy that said it No one else believed me You know That's all like um, Galileo You were talking about him A couple of weeks ago And you said you didn't know who he was That's what he w- Is most um, Known for About mm. like Where is the earth Like is the earth The center of the universe Or the sun yeah. And that went against the Bible and that's what he beca- that's what he was most well known for. Church, yeah, yeah. He, had, he had to argue against the church and say, no, the sun is the center of the universe. And, mm. you know? Yeah, and then because of that, he's so well known. And now we're talking about him. Mm. Yeah. And it's like that because it's conspiracy. It's like that one guy. Yeah. So the whole point is they're important to society because they're kind of like our barometer to understand whether or not that corruption that they're claiming exists is true or not true. So it's kind of like our warning. If that canary goes down, this obvious. actually exists. Mm. They should do the same thing with roaches in a can. I think at nuclear labs. Mm. I'm not 100 percent sure, but at like at like um the nuclear plants and stuff like that, they used to have cans of like not cans or like, like jars of cockroaches. And if they're dead, so what does that something's go- up? What does that go for with the conspiracy theories? So basically, yeah, what I'm telling you is that conspiracy theorists are important to us because if if basically if they're hitting the right nerves with the wrong people. Basically, the people they're speaking out against, we know the rest of us have a nice warning system mm. that if, for example, like, you know, the Khashoggi, I don't know what his name is, Allah, Jamal, Jamal, Ali the, 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 the guy who, the journalist who wrote out against the Saudi government. Yeah. He was chopped up, you know, he was put in, he was basically put in acid, burning, they, they did everything possible to make sure that Everyone else knows if you do something to speak out against us, this is your this is what's gonna happen to you. Mm. But what we're saying is Jamal was the canary in the cage. Now everyone knows that the Saudi government does or yeah. they claim not to. Sorry, my apologies. I'll, I'll end up getting shot dead or something. But mm. <laughs> like I'm not even taking the piss, bro. These guys are actually on smoke for no reason, mm-hmm. bro. Like it's one of those things where like um a lot of our teachers say if you don't live in the country and you're not an expert on it, it's better not to be open about your opinion and talking too mm. abruptly about this is the fact. Because a lot of the time, it's like, for example, a lot of people might say about you as an individual, this is the fact. And it's like, but you don't know me. Mm. How can you be making an opinion? And it's like, y- you just think like, what a weak um, statement you're making. Like how are you even coming from a place of knowledge? Yeah. So it's one of those things where it's... No, no, no. For I me, it's not, I'm not definitely saying this is that and that this. What I'm saying is, doesn't everything like doesn't everything allude to that fact you know mm. like when you have somebody because jamal he had like he had a lot of information he was the inside guy he was like he was like like one of their number ones you know he was one of their like they're basically he was one of the center points of their media of saudi and and the whole government the the whole basically the monarchy then the, he knew they knew he knew everything about them and then he started to speak out against the corruption or whatever was going on there. And one thing that you can notice is that when something is true and you don't have the ability to defend it, the only way to shut it off is to either create violence hmm. or to or to eliminate the source of that information yeah. being leaked. You see it in a debate, like for example, 
um, you stop debating the argument, you start debating the man, mm. putting them mm. down. Because they're going to so you know, Like, for example, we're talking sport predictions last week. You stopped arguing with me, and you stopped arguing what I was saying, and you started arguing with my other beliefs. Your like, Arsenal's this, that. and this. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, bro, that means, you know? But, think, in, but uh, in a debate, sometimes whoever talks the loudest has the most power kind of thing you know what i mean like when it's yeah. just like a yeah, casual it it's not like a that. it's not an actual debate it's just a chat so it's a, one of those kind of things you know i think you struck a nerve when you said melbourne by 40 so yeah it was closest <laughs> to the freaking prediction <laughs> yeah. bro. it just kills me so. <laughs> should put money on it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that'd be good yeah, that'd be good like gambling that's I sports for sports i want to I, I was gonna ask ali today because you two both have very conflicting views on waking up early so i want to hear what you guys what say because I, Ali, you've been waking up. He's been waking up at four a.m. every day on purpose mm -hmm. to try to like see how that goes. Look at his face. And so, how is the opposite where he goes? What's your opinion? You just think it's a w complete waste then of time. Yeah. And there's no need for it. If you're not praying to Hajj, then don't bother. Uh, but <laughs> you <laughs> he wakes up and just sits there. <laughs> but I feel like you come from a point where it's like you've had to do it over time because of work, so you're kind of forced into it. It's basically it a lifestyle. Like earlier now. than that, isn't it, or no? It used to be 3 o'clock, 2.30 yeah, so sometimes. I'll probably be the same. I'll get sick of that. I'll be like, nah, man, I want to sleep in a bit. But yeah. I'm just doing it for like, because I feel like lockdown's a bit, not a bit, actually a lot repetitive. And then also you can get away with a lot of procrastination and just wasting time. But, you know, that also, <laughs> like it just piles on. You start to waste even more time. You get more lazier. You just delay things to the last second. And then all of a sudden you feel rushed to do things. I'm not enjoying my days as much, I guess. So I just want to like spice it up, change it, yeah. try something uncomfortable. So I thought to myself, 4 a.m., it's been, I think today was this eighth day yeah, of getting up at 4 a.m. This is not convincing. <laughs> <laughs> so like the first few days, I had to get up on like five hours of sleep. So okay. I was smashing coffee. I had to. Coffee yeah, and a cheat no. code. Basically a cheat you code. If you want to stay up, yeah, like if you want to get up early, it's not hard to have a coffee and then stay up. But mm. obviously, I'm going li to limit myself. I'm not going to drink like five, six. Mm, like I have another early. mate. I have another mate who went into the same basic field that mm. I'm in, or that caused me to be up at four a.m. every morning. Mm. And he he basically was when I was when I was in uni. Yeah, he'd always look at me and go, "Why the hell are you always like this? Why are these flashes of emotions always a thing?" Because there's something called after five o'clock, sis. <laughs> yeah, that's what him and. My other mate have got like that, like, um, I'll just name him anyway, Bilal Ali and Ahmed Abarid. Mm. These boys, yeah, what happens is, shout out. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so these boys always, when we're at uni past five o'clock, they knew they were going to get a cooked Seuss. Yeah? yeah? They call me Seuss after five. <laughs> so basically, <laughs> I'm telling these boys, like, look, I'm telling you, it's not got nothing to do with me. Sleep deprivation does things to you that you don't mm. even know yourself it could happen to you, you know? Mm. Like, there's certain. There's certain waves of emotions that you receive from lack of sleep. And, and this isn't like a, oh, I've been doing this for one year. This is like a three year, four year, five yeah, year thing. You know, it's been consistent. Yeah. But I think the point, the you said sleep deprivation. So obviously that's not getting enough sleep. But if you can still get your seven hours in, for example, like I think if you sleep at nine and you wake up four and you may take a nap in the day and stuff, you might not be able to because obviously yours was for work. Mm. But some people do it at a choice, and that might actually have a beneficial... Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But that's what I was going to say. If there's a reason for you mm. to wake up at 4 a.m., if there's a reason for you to get something done, or you need mm. a, you wanted to get close to Allah, pray to Hajjud from now on, or there's, there's like a purpose. If there's no purpose, I would genuinely just wake up for Fajr. But what about I your... I say that, you wake say up your mate Fajr time. Oh, you might have that perspective. Oh, yeah, sorry, after yeah. Five, yeah. Well, well, my point is, but um, yeah, my point was, Ahmed ended up doing it for a solid what five months, four months oh, after. So he was mm. doing the f the three a.m. runs, the four a.m. runs, like oh, I used yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, And the way he was moving, oh, mate, you saw everything you do. It was me back in the day, <laughs> and I looked at him laughing. I'm like, yeah, I'm the only one. Yeah, I'm I'm the only yeah. one. Yeah. Did he realize as well, or no? It just became normal. Of course he knew, five it, bro. Because I didn't, time. I didn't let him forget it, bro. Of course I'm not gonna, bro. Because they used to always tell me, like they, they used to complain sometimes. Like, Seuss, bro, you gotta stop being a weirdo, bro. After <laughs> five, man. And I was like to him, yeah. trust me, you've got no option. Yeah. You're dead at three thirty in the afternoon. I'll give you, an, I'll, I'll tell you the exact process. I will have coffees in the morning up until twelve. And then after Wait, so 12, so two, okay, maybe some right. days three, depending on how much like sleep you get. Yeah. 
So it depends on how the, the quality of sleep was. Mm. And then what will happen is I kind of like, <laughs> I kind of like feel myself wearing at three o'clock. So I'll be yeah, like, I'll be like this. And I remember seeing Ahmed like this slouched at Bilal Ali's house one, one day. So at Bilal Ali's house one day and you can see Ahmed slouched <laughs> and he's kind of like leaning back and I'm looking at him like <laughs> this and I'm like, yeah, okay. Watch the flash you're going to get of, of uh, this wave of energy out of nowhere you're going to get in about mm. maybe an hour and you're going to be the most annoying human being on planet earth you watch mm. okay, you watch and he worked bro i'm telling you 4 30 without hesitation this brother gets up get this wave of energy from nowhere mm. touchy feely grabbing people lifting them up but how does that happen i, I don't get that bro, just, i'm telling second you wave. it just happens yeah, bro. yeah. second wave yeah, it's, I like it that. just happens yeah. you don't have control mm. sometimes yeah and I, I know a lot of people are going to sit there thinking oh no you know, you're just talking, bro. I'm telling you, try it. If you do this consistently every day for I don't care how long, yeah, four, mm. five months, four, six months, you're gonna get this exact. I don't know what the scientific term is for it, but you're gonna get it. I think you're. It's a bit different though, because you're saying like two a.m., three a.m. Mm. That extra hour I- even plays a part. Like if it's two thirty and four o'clock, Ashraf, just do it. Just but do, like it. do it with Ali. Do it with Ali. Though. Talk to me about scientific terms later. <laughs> but the thing is, trust me. I'm, I'm getting. I'm actually sleeping early as well. Like the first few nights, it was almost impossible. You have to kind of force it, like staying up, sacrifice a few hours sleep those mm. few days, and then you eventually start sleeping earlier. Mm. So now I'm actually like, I got the time. I'm in lockdown to be able to sleep earlier, even if I have to. Worst case, naps. Mm. So it's like I'm kind of yeah, you didn't have that. Ex- I'm I'm kind That's of escaping true, like those lapses of energy and stuff. If I was at uni or was at work, then I'll be co- I'll be copying mm. that every single day. Oh, I used to work five a.m. I did it for six months. Huh? I did five a.m. for six months. Used it's to cute. get up three thirty, four o'clock for work. It's now, cute. but I'm just saying, like I did it enough to kind of know it's gonna play a part if you don't get your hours in. I was sleeping like nine. Mm. Yeah, but waking up at four. Yeah, but if you sleep at eleven, wake up two thirty. You're you're playing yourself. And you're not a coffee drinker either. Yeah, so. that was. Yeah, <laughs> had a long black the other day. <laughs> oh, yeah. This guy. What was your impression? I forgot to ask. <laughs> first, firstly, it burnt my tongue. Yeah, hundred yeah, yeah, so percent. It's because I don't drink coffee since juice. <laughs> <laughs> and bro, he's not a coffee drinker. Go straight to like the most bitter drink. I forced him, bro. Yeah, no, it, was, it was perfect. <laughs> yeah, I recorded that. Yeah, no, okay, I have bro. to show you. I have to show you that was. Because I was forcing it down. I didn't finish it there. It was 4.30 in the afternoon. And I was like, no. Nah. Ali's like, don't try to, don't finish it. So I drank like a third. It's bad. Yeah, but I had like eight sips. So I just kept trying. I'm like, but I did, I took a couple. And I'm like, okay, let me go. Let me just take three more. Bismillah, like, I'm not going to die. But my facial reaction, I was like, <laughs> subhanallah. Did you end up staying later? Like staying up later than expected because of the coffee or not? I hit second wave like at 7 p.m., bro. Because I was just wrecked that day. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Cause I did two hours of um, like gardening outside. My workout took four hours. Gardening? Yeah, like I was raking all the leaves because we mowed the lawn. Like we had it, and then I had to do that for two hours, and I did four hour workout. Four hour. Yeah, workout. no break. <laughs> it was the most disgusting, one of the oh, toughest things I've ever done. No, no. Did you guys will see that soon. So, did you listen to anything in this workout? Because it, yeah. it was random at the start, but then like you can't. And then that board was you should have done work. <laughs> <to me. laughs> I was fa- FaceTime here, oh, FaceTime no legendary. I was trying to get mind off doing, bro. <laughs> he saw me. I'm like, I'm like, oh, I can't wait for too long. Let me do some push ups. Do push ups. I'm chatting to him again. Time, bro. I was yeah. like, what's this guy? I doing? honestly don't know how you did this workout. Like, yeah. well, obviously, you're not going to say the numbers, but people will find out. Yeah. Because I was thinking, why didn't you just do what Goggins did? Just play Rocky for like four hours. I played his for like an hour and a half. Played what? Who's going to carry the boats? No way. An hour and a half, yeah. <laughs> uh, you have to bro. Yeah, you have I no tried um, Wim Hof Have you ever tried Wim Hof breathing? Nah I'm not gonna get I mean, don't, don't rule me in now That TikTok dude Yeah I'm not Is gonna, it TikTok? That guy The one that got um, The one that got um, Abused on TikTok Oh no that's what I was saying Wakes up at 4am And does <laughs> Wim Hof breathing And one t- 170 push ups straight <laughs> <laughs> Like as an Still can't find him Nah I did this, this 11 minute beginner thing On YouTube It was actually Because I did normal meditation Guided meditation But you feel present, you work on your breathing, but the Wim Hof, I felt like I was getting better better at breathing. Do you sit on an ice bath or something? No, no, no. You lie down on the floor, but he does this thing. You know, normally like you, when you go underwater, you take a big inhale and then you hold it. Mm-hmm. He exhales and then he goes, hold it right at the end. So there's nothing. Like he didn't build up, you didn't open up your lungs. Oh, wow. So when he's doing it, he goes the first round, he did 30 seconds at the end, then a minute, then I did a minute and a half. 
So it works. Yeah, like I did it. Like it was, it was killing me. It, it is a bit dangerous. You shouldn't be doing like the advanced levels. But I was like, damn. Like it was interesting because you kept getting better. Thirty seconds. I was like, I can't do any longer. Then I did a minute. Then a minute and a half. Can I ask you where you did this? Where? Mm. In the lounge room, on the floor. <laughs> Where was the br- oh holding your breath? I thought it was underwater. No, no, what? no, no. no. I was like, where's the I, pool? I, the I was giving an example. <laughs> I was giving an example, like when you have to hold your breath and stuff like that. That's what you do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know, like recently uh, I've read James Nestor, the breath book, mm. and it talks a lot about meditation and stuff like that. But I don't know, like uh, you don't, you ne- maybe you need a teacher or something like that. Like the way he was explaining, I was trying to do it, and I'm like bloody hell, this is difficult. And there's so many different methods to it. So when I actually tried normal, like non-guided meditation and guided meditation, I don't know, like it was a bit, <coughs> you get maybe bored after mm-hmm. like 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But then Wim Hof, you kind of see the improvement. So that's what I liked about it. It's like, I felt like I was getting better. Mm. So one was for mental clarity. One was for improving your lung capacity and breathing capabilities. That's what I kind of liked about it as well. And mental clarity. It's like two birds, one stone. Yeah, you need to go to Nepal, bro, and kick off the monks in the in the mountains, bro. That's that's where that guy went. Who? James Nestor. Did you, yeah. you heard the story? Bro, yeah? he said they were doing studies on like these monks who could just by breathing change their body temperature, like by twelve degrees, like six up, six down. Yeah, and same as Wim Hof, like any he d- digestion, doesn't he? he bro, they could about melt it, ice digest. around them. In how long though? Like, can they change their body temperature? I don't know. Do uh, it didn't. Yeah. No, that's just fascinating to yeah. me. Like, how even if it did take long, it's just like how. <laughs> big error. Um, what did Raul say about it? About what? Um, breath the book because he's a big advocate, but I never. S- I spoke to him when I was like Sebs reading it, so I want yeah. to know what he told you. So you know the way there's a pattern of breathing where you kind of like breathe out for a longer period of time, then when you breathe in, you hold your breath for like three seconds, and then you breathe out for like yeah. seven. Uh, I don't know exactly what that is. Was a five, three, he did, seven? He, he, there was all these different techniques, like seven, eight. But the main one, he was trying to push is like inhale for five and a half seconds and exhale five and a half because that's the perfect five amount. Five and a half. <laughs> that's what he said, yeah. Five and a half. We're going to do <laughs> fire out, man. Yeah. Got to be precise. But yeah. uh, anyways, um, yeah, he was just talking about how the way he, like, I think he said that he drastically, like, changed his, his fitness levels. So, like, he started nasal breathing. He started breathing basically just through his nose when he was running on the treadmill, when he was walking up the steps. So he kind of like closes his mouth and just breathes through his nose the whole time. Because you get lightheaded at the beginning, but then you get like this, you know, this weird wave of static energy at the back of your head. And then like your ears block and Mm. you kind of like get woozy. You know, you get those sparks Mm. that come out the side of your eyes. So he's kind of like, he was getting a bit dazed from it, but then you can kind of like see the progress. And it kind of took me back to when I was in, when I was doing preseason for footy like maybe um, when I was 14 or 15. And I noticed that pre-season for footy, they try to get you fit. So you're doing intense running, you're doing sprints, you're doing like laps consistently and you're getting fit for the season. So what happens is I was running and the only time I noticed that the running became easier was when I'd have a spell where the sparks started coming besides my eyes or I started getting out of breath or I felt like I was about to pass out because of how hard I ran. You know, started becoming easier. Ah, uh, so the next day or the next training uh, session I came to, that same yeah. that same amount of training was nothing, and then the next training mm. was n- even easier. Uh, yeah. The next training after yeah. that, but it, it was always like that was a s- like that was the symbol that I was progressing in that. You're pushing your max. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't. Yeah, I, I like like I said. I don't know. Man, it, it works. He told me that also. Like his his mum was taking like pills for like whatever issues that she had health wise and then she didn't really need the pills anymore after like using those breathing techniques that he learned from the book so. it was because i listened to the podcast someone he told me to but it didn't really convince me until I obviously read it because i've had to put so many hours into it yeah there was so many biological things that's like subhanallah just breathing we he goes over 95 percent of us breathe wrong like we should never inhale through our mouth and we should breathe less. And he spoke about like diabetes, even like he said um, it's eating from your nose if you breathe out your mouth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's how stupid it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's what he says. That's that's what he uses. But a name. big thing was, for example, like crooked teeth. See how crooked teeth is a normal thing. Like there's like seventy percent of people get braces or whatever the statistic is, and it's like it w- it's never a no other mammal has a consistency of having crooked teeth. And pre-200 years ago, Industrial Revolution, 
there's no skull which has crooked teeth. Like he did studies on all these skulls and stuff. He's like, what the hell? Why is that? Why is that happening? You know. And then he settles for breathing. Then later on, he started explaining it's because we don't chew as much. Our food become processed, so we don't chew properly. So we're not like you know, just yeah. like food just processed. You just swallow it pretty much straight away because yeah, yeah. of how soft yeah. it is. And because of that, our jaws get weaker. And then if you start breathing through our mouth, our mouths become smaller. And it's just so interesting, you know, diabetes, health conditions, you know, heart problems, yeah, you know. Yep. There was so much. I was like, subhanAllah, you know. That's why I started um, duct taping my mouth when I sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was a weird one. Can't but get around the beard. I, I watched someone do it and it talks about how like if people, I don't know, do you wake up ever during the night having to drink water? Me never because I don't sleep enough anyway. So. <laughs> how about when you wake up, are you always like really thirsty? No, I know. Okay. Because you drink yeah, four litres a day. Yeah. But before that, yeah. But I I spoke to some of my friends and stuff, and they said it's very common for them to wake up during lunch and have, have to drink water. Mm. Does that ever happen to you? What friends? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> They're weird guys then. <laughs> but it's like, it's a common thing. I remember me, I used to always, I never woke up during the night, but as soon as I woke up, I used to always drink water because I say it's like good in the morning. And I always felt so refreshing, like such a good feeling. And then as soon as as soon as I started duct taping my mouth, when I woke up, I wasn't that thirsty, because maybe like I rarely breathe through my mouth when I sleep. Some people do, mm. but because I have to breathe through my nose, I never woke up like dehydrated or as dehydrated as I used to be. Mm. But even like snoring, it's impossible to snore out of your mouth. What? Snore out of your nose, sorry. It's impossible. Yeah, yeah, my bad. <laughs> it's impossible to snore out of your nose. Yeah. So for people that are snoring, it's because your mouth breathing. Okay. You know, and that's uh, there's ways to obviously fix it. It's a bit dangerous. Um, so you probably should like see a physician for that and stuff like that. But it's interesting because like how common is snoring? Like Ali was watching you know, a show the other day and he knocked and he was snoring. I was like, bloody hell, you know? I only went off super tired, man. <laughs> bro, he was giving me issue when we went to that. We went to that Airbnb, bro. Serious? You remember? Why did you tell me this? Bro, he was, no, no, no. Not that you were snoring. You were giving me shit for snoring. Oh, you yeah. Like, you were bad, bro. Like you're a mouth <laughs> breather, Le. I was a mouth breather. Was? Until I, I read breath. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <Hey, right now. laughs> nah, I sleep on my stomach. That's what that's what helps me for now. <laughs> when I don't have the um there's a mouthpiece that I got from a from a sleeping specialist. So Damn. what happened was because of because of altercations, my jaw's a bit my jaw you can hear it like click. So my jaw's a bit out of line. It's not really in line the way it should be. So it's loose. So when I'm asleep, it kind of leans back and then closes the airway um while I'm asleep. Mm. And then, like my tongue kind of falls in and blocks whatever's left of the airway. That's what causes the um, the issues when I sleep. For like, for example, snoring and sleep apnea and stuff like that. So having that device or that, that mouthpiece kind of like pulls my jaw forward, and it has like this. Um, all the time when you sleep. Well, I, d I don't use it all the time, but when I don't have it in, I have to sleep on my stomach because you know, it will allow me to like sleep. Does it make you breathe out of your nose? Like, because you can't breathe out of your mouth if you got like a mouth. Well, or you can open your mouth still, but well, I think I think you kind of like allude to just breathing out of your nose. Yeah. But um, yeah, that mouthpiece just locks your jaw forward because it has like this. It has this too. Yeah. It seems uncomfortable, but you get used to it. Just like sleeping four hours a day or whatever. You're doing now. <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, man, nah, it's yeah, breathing is important, man. But it's <laughs> interesting just to learn about. Because it might, like, a lot of times you read a book and it could be, like, revolutionary to one person. Like it at all, it changed his life. Me, it was more like, that's a very interesting insight and it'll change the way I do things. But it's not life-changing. Do you get it? Mm. Like, it'll change the way I breathe, how I sleep, how I even work out. But it's not like, oh, my God, I'll die by this. But the 1% you know? is, mate. Yeah. But it's life-changing to yeah, other people as well. Yeah, 100%. Like you, you said, the way people sleep and stuff, they g like your mates, man. It's probably life-changing for them. If, if you snore and it makes you stop snoring, that's life-changing. Because mm. I wouldn't be able to sleep next to someone that snores. Or sleep apnea, bro. Or people yeah. that have sleep apnea. Yeah. yeah the, they keep waking up regularly throughout the night. If that helps them out, mm. bro, it could, ch it could help alter mood. You know, you, but you, you, if you don't if you don't know about this, but sleep apnea basically it leads to diabetes. It leads to um, other Respiratory health implications. Problems, yeah? yeah. So like like but yeah like heart heart issues and mm. stuff like that. So what happens is because of the 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 quality of sleep being so low, it affects your everyday life. Mm. You know, 
or you're just basically you getting on with your life you can't you can't like you can't work properly you're not you're always lethargic you know you um you kind of like you allude to just because when you're tired you look for energy in any way in any form or any shape you start to going towards you start going towards junk food and you start mm. to become like your health starts to deteriorate basically but do you listen to anything before you sleep anything like that could eh? do you like when you sleep maybe it's not a oh when i sleep <laughs> yeah like, this guy like when you're about stuff. to fall asleep or when you're asleep like no i don't how about you um not not at the moment but i did listen used to listen to like background noises like white noise so what's, what's white guys? noise? Is that what it is? Yeah, like they're so only one of those guys. No, or just some, some sometimes because like <laughs> sometimes chirping. This is awkward. No, I'm about to say <laughs> because sometimes <laughs> it's, I hear this, like this random ringing noise, like when I'm trying to sleep. Uh, so it just helps. Uh, yeah. I, I, I've started to play white noise. I've like done it for maybe like two months now. I just like there's this eight-hour video about like rain, and I just play it because I used to play Quran and stuff. But sometimes I'm like. He's reciting and I'm trying to listen to it yeah. and really enjoy the recitation. So I'm up and enjoying it, trying to stay up. And then Legendary told me, he goes, listen to a um, lecture before you sleep. And he goes, um, just Don't listen to up. it and then fall asleep listening to it. But then a lot of the time it's entertaining. Mm. You know what I mean? Like even if you're tired, it's like, but what's happening next? All it takes is for one, for one thing for him to say to trigger yeah. your brain. It's like, oh, I actually want to listen to it. Because I used to be able to sleep during t like watching TV shows. I don't do that anymore. I'm always like so into it. Mm. What's you something know? about epistemology? <laughs> <laughs> I'm out then. But <laughs> I tried white noise. It's I think it's helping. I don't really know. Like Because you try all these different things at one time, mm. it's hard to know what's really helping. But another thing is my nose used to be clogged daily. And I used to use the nasal spray. And as soon as I started duct taping my mouth, not gone. Oh, well. Wow. So, yeah, that just reminded me. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Stay safe in lockdown. For you guys that aren't in lockdown, pray for us. See you next time.